Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for purchasing this or any watch you see on our channel or our website. Reach out to me at tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing the discontinued FP Journe Octo Automatique Lune in 38 millimeters, platinum with a brass movement and yellow gold dial. Discontinued on several levels. We'll talk about this timepiece that's considered to be vintage by the standards of FP Journe watches. 38 millimeters in diameter, a case size discontinued back in 2015. It wears easily on my 16 centimeters circumference wrist thanks to a 10.4 millimeter thickness. It slides under a cuff and it's only 44.8 millimeters lug to lug with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Again, my wrist, 16 centimeters, throw it on real quick. This this is the ultimate modern day dress collectible complication as it has just enough refinement and technical complexity to titillate the movement enthusiast and at the same time it slides underneath any dress cuff or tight sleeve. The timepiece is compact across the wrist so though it's a 38 it wears more like a 36 and as you can see the lugs are tightly downturned and short cropped so this is an excellent unisex option as well as an option for the traditionalist. Let's take a look at the hardware and the software. As you can see the strap is large rectangular scale alligator leather in navy blue with a monotone stitch semi-gloss finish and a folded edge. There's more alligator leather small round scale on the bottom. The purpose of the double gaiter is to make the strap last longer as gaiter lasts longer than the calfskin typically used on the underside of straps. More expensive, but then this watch is worth it. Pull tab spring bars for easy removal of the strap from the case and you can see that Jorn uses lugs that are drilled relatively close to the case and then curved spring bars so you can still pull the strap straight down without encumbrance. It isn't impinged by the flank of the case and thus it can be pulled around a small wrist. The timepiece features a matching plastic platinum pin buckle naturally, in the case all of high polish. As you can see, it's a characteristic Jorn case form with integrated lug profiles, tightly downturned lugs that trimmels 90 degrees down from the sweep of the horizontal. They turn dramatically and they curve inward dramatically. The mid case defined by the overlapping lip of the case back in the bezel and then the bezel all in domed profile. The watch entirely of high polish and as you can see in excellent condition. It features the characteristic Jorn knurled and double dimple crown. It is a double quick set, one for the date, one for the moon phase. You turn in different directions opposite each other to adjust the two complications in the intermediate position. The watch features a 120 hour power reserve and I'll wind the watch a little bit to demonstrate. It will run in fact for close to seven days but FP Jorn recommends 120 hours as the chronometric or good timekeeping power reserve and that is why 120 hours is indicated on the dial. The watch does feature a double digit date, a lovely media blasted yellow gold dial, and you have a black polished steel inner bezel for the dials featuring hours, minutes, and seconds, and then outboard you have the dial side black polished bolts, originally coined by F.P. Jorn on his prototypes during the 1990s, initially lambasted, later copied by everyone, and much loved today, Jorn was the trendsetter in this stylistic regard. Turn the watch over, I mentioned there are several discontinuous continued aspects of this watch. One is the case size, but let's talk about the case itself for a moment. Jumping in, you can see that there are both French and Swiss hallmarks on this platinum case, and that's because the case was made by Eleanor. There's the Eleanor Maker's Mark Actually, that's the Eleanor Maker's Mark right there. And that was a Parisian metropolitan area case maker that built cases for Jorn from his first pocket watch in 1983 right up until about 2008 when he purchased it and moved it to Geneva to become Boitier de Genève. So these Eleanor cases have both the Maker's Mark, the old French builder, and the hallmarks of both France and Switzerland on them. You can also see it features a stamp, 04. That indicates the year the case itself was made. This was a practice that was discontinued around mid-2005. You'll also appreciate the fact that there is a brass movement. Rhodium coated makes it silver, but it is a brass movement. And this was discontinued around mid-2004, so both the case and the movement probably around mid-2004 having been joined together to create the watch. Now, the discontinued first generation caliber 1300 is a unidirectional winder versus the later, or I should say it is a bidirectional winder versus the later unidirectional winder, so it doesn't have a wild freewheel in either direction. This early version, of course, both a bidirectional winder and brass movement, other discontinued aspects. So you've got the case manufacturer, 
the case date stamp, the case size, you have this discontinued brass movement and a first generation 1300. You can see there is actually a 22 karat Grand Doge or barley corn guilloche cut rotor. And then we have a Cote de Genève engine turn perlage, black polished screw heads, and a free sprung balance beating away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. It's adjusted in five positions, which is the high horology and chronometer standard. The only refinement the watch lacks is hacking seconds. Now the timepiece, of course, is designed to run with maximum precision, so you can see it even says on the bridge, on the winding bridge, five position adjustment. That is the gold standard for high horology watches. You'll also note that the balance itself is very large. With a large amount of inertia, it overcomes bumps, disruptions, and concussion-induced timing deviation on the wrist. All of this water resistant down to 30 meters. And as you can see, the dial is absolutely immaculate. Movement likewise. Remember, mid-2004, Jorn movements became solid gold, which though worth more as a commodity, are worth less as they are more common. Email tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.